So lesson three, a uh, reminder, your test is next week, Wednesday. In the collision seen below between the truck and the car, which vehicle experiences the larger force? The truck, the car, or both the same? You know what? Once again, we're going to vote. Once again, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. I'm positive, pretty sure, only voting because Mr. Dewey can make fun of me if I don't vote at all. So which vehicle experiences the larger force? Who says, the truck? It's got to be the truck. No one. Who says, Duick, obviously, the car. I've seen car crashes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Who says both the same? Convince me. And again, you can attack or defend. Attack someone else's answer or being for... Oscar, you just made my day. Oscar, what did you say? So I'm going to say Newton's third law, forces come in pairs. It's impossible for the truck to apply a force on the car and not get exactly the same size force back. I love this question because I almost always get a lot of kids saying, well, Mr. Duick, the car experiences the larger force. It does not. What it does experience is more damage. So now we're going to talk about why that's the case. Why is it that the car and the driver are almost always worse off in this collision? Oscar, did you say that or did you steal it from him? Did you say that the first time? You're on a roll. Because of Newton's third law, okay, both forces are the same. I'll put F equals F. In the truck, I have a big mass. With the car, I have a little mass. Well, if I have the same force and the big mass, what happens to the acceleration? Bigger, smaller, or? With a truck, huge M, small a. With a car, small m. And so you know what we should say, you've heard the saying, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the impact, or you know what? In a car crash, it's not the force that kills you, it's the acceleration. It's the acceleration that does the damage. And that's why in a Greyhound bus, for example, with that large mass, if it's in a car accident, probably the passengers, even if they're not wearing seatbelts, are probably only going to get some bruises, assuming the thing doesn't flip over or anything like that. I need to give you a definition. A closed system is one that's cut off from the outside world. There are no net external forces or energy sources. Some examples would be uh, frictionless surfaces, like ice, if ice was completely and perfectly frictionless. And for our intents and purposes, we pretend it is, even though I know eventually things do come to a stop on ice. Uh, Deep intergalactic space, that is a good example of a closed system where there are no net external forces. That's a little difficult for us to get to, but we can imagine it. Systems floating on water, rolling objects. Big deal. We're going to be using the term closed system in, a, in the lesson. For collisions in a closed system, the contact forces are governed by Newton's third, as Oscar so eloquently said. Forces come in pairs. What that means is that in a collision, assuming there's no outside energy sources, momentum change is equal and opposite. If the force of, on the truck equals negative the force on the car, Newton's third, I'm going to argue the collision lasts the same amount of time for both of them because they're both in the same collision, so they both must experience the same amount of time. But what is force times time? Impulse. What we're saying is in a car crash, in a head-on collision, both cars, both vehicles, both si whatever we're talking about, experience the same magnitude of impulse, just one has it in the opposite direction. They both experience the same momentum change. 
What does it say to mean, what does it mean to say that momentum change is equal and opposite? For example, if the car above loses 20 units of momentum, what happens to the truck? Gains. We have a word for this, this idea that when one thing goes up, when one thing goes down, another quantity goes up in the same magnitude. We call it conservation. This is the conservation of momentum. I wrote here, since momentum change is equal and opposite, the momentum for the system is neither gained nor lost. It's simply transferred from one object to the other. This is very similar to the definition I gave you for the law of conservation of energy, where I said energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's transformed from one form to another. Heat and momentum, momentum is transferred from one object to another, but it's never lost. The amount of momentum before a collision has to equal the amount of momentum after the collision. By the way, Thomas, you're going to love this lesson. You'll see why in a few minutes. <coughs> Example four. If conditions are such that the car and truck end up at rest after the collision, well, if they both end up at rest, what's their final momentum for each of them if they end up at rest? Well, how can we say that we didn't lose momentum then if we ended up with zero momentum? Because we, start, be, because we started with zero momentum. It's that simple. If we ended with zero momentum, I'm telling you we started with zero momentum. Really, Mr. Duke? Yeah. Here's the before. Here's the after. Before, I have momentum of the truck and momentum of the car. Okay? After... I know it equals zero kilogram meters per second. The after part is easy. Momentum is what times what? This one should be almost at your fingertips. Momentum is what times what? Yes, mass, mass times velocity. So this is gonna be mass of the truck, velocity of the truck, plus mass of the car, velocity, you guys are okay, T for truck, C for car? You guys have gotten comfy with this subscript notation, which is so much easier than writing stuff out. All right, here it is. What's the mass of the truck? I put numbers in this question now. I love the fact that people squint up there. You know, it's right in front of you, Spence. Just say, okay. What's the velocity of the truck? 10. Plus, what's the mass of the car? What's the velocity of the car? 20. What? Spencer, you caught yourself. What? We're in vector land now. That makes a difference. And the fact that momentum is a vector, you know what? You get 24,000, take away 24,000. You don't need a calculator for that, Jordan. What is 24,000 take away 24,000? And I told you it would be zero because my final momentum was zero. The amount of momentum before the collision was zero. Each of them had their own momentum, but if I add the vectors, if I bring in the direction, my net overall momentum was zero. How do I know? Because that's what I ended up with. That's the law of conservation of momentum. The law of conservation momentum says this. In any collision or explosion in a closed system, momentum is conserved. This means that momentum is not created nor destroyed, but it's transferred from one object to another. Or, I don't have football players in here, do I? Okay. Or, this is why if you tackle somebody you lose some of your velocity, not your mass, because you're passing some of your momentum onto the person that you're tackling. Or if you body check somebody for the hockey players, same idea. In fact, body checking hockey collisions are really nice because ice is nearly frictionless. That gives us actually, our physics will be pretty accurate. 
The law of conservation of momentum can be written in several ways. First of all, it can be written in English. The total initial momentum of a system equals the total final momentum of a system. Remember, the law of conservation of energy was the total kinetic plus the total, uh, sorry, kinetic initial plus potential initial equals kinetic final plus potential final. Um, do you think, Amy, from what you know, that I'm going to write this out in English every time? No. Okay. I'm going to pick the shortest one. You can write it as the momentum of the first thing initial plus the momentum of the second thing initial equals the momentum of the first thing final plus the momentum of the second thing final. I tend to use this because it's the shortest and it's the nerdiest looking. Now, what does this mean? You'll notice in front of each thing, there's this symbol here. It's called a sigma. Does anybody know what that's an abbreviation for? It's a great abbreviation to add to your note taking, by the way. It's the Greek, it's where our letter S comes from. It's a Greek letter S, sort of, but <coughs> you know what it's an abbreviation for? Okay. This means, you can put in quotes, the sum of, or the total. When you get to college, and most of you will go to college, you will find there is a shorthand notation that college students have developed over the years, and you'll pick it up from your peers because you can't write as fast as the profs talk. Your arm will fall off. And so you'll find things like, don't write this down. You guys know what that one means already, right? Okay, therefore, that's the abbreviation for with. Why? It just is. Okay, you, you pick up all sorts of stuff and you'll find this one here, you'll often replace the word total or in summary or the sum of. So what this means is the total momentum before equals the total momentum after. I like it because it's nerdy, because it's short, because it's the least amount of writing. Or you can write this one as well. Let's try a question. A 1.5, oh, make a little note here actually. Use conservation of momentum. Can I abbreviate that C of M? In collisions and explosions. Or as I like to say, in Jeanne's, call it Jeanne, explode, Jeanne, this is a job for conservation of momentum. We use conservation of momentum when there's a collision or an explosion. Example, a 1.5 times 10 to the third kilogram car traveling 44 meters per second collides, wham, head on, with a 1 times 10 to the third kilogram car. You're going to love this lesson, Thomas. Traveling 22 meters per second in the opposite direction. All of us, let's underline the phrase opposite direction. If the cars stick together on impact, what's the velocity of the wreckage immediately after the impact? Okay. Is there a collision or an explosion? Is there a jeune in this question? This is a job for conservation momentum. I'm going to write this. The sum of all the momentum before the collision equals the sum of all the momentum after the collision. Okay? And then I ask myself the same questions over and over. Before the collision, what was moving? Mass 1? Mass two, okay, first of all, let's decide from now on, unless the question says different, the first mass you come to, we'll just call it mass one. And the second mass you come to, we'll call it mass two. We'll just go, ahead and go in order. And that way I don't have to always say that every time. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Both. Stuck together or separate before the collision? So I'm going to have this. 
momentum one initial plus momentum two initial. Bam! They collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? The answer here, I think, is both, because then I'm going to say stuck together or separate. Stuck together. Well, if one car is moving, then both cars are moving if they're stuck together and they're wanting me to find the final velocity. Okay. Momentum, both final. You see how we derive that? Okay. Kyle, momentum is what times what? So momentum one initial is going to be mass one V one initial, right? Plus mass two V two initial. Is that okay? Wham, they collide. How would I do momentum of both? Well, if they're stuck together, I'm going to use brackets. I'm going to go mass one plus mass two V final. There they are, stuck together. You okay with that, Thomas? You awake? Yeah. Thomas, what's this question asking me to find? Which one? Ah. Good. So not initial of car one, although if I could do that too if they gave me enough information, or initial velocity of car, V final, how would I get the V final by itself? <coughs> the bracket. Yep. So the final speed of the wreckage after the collision is going to be the mass of the first car, velocity of the first car initial, combined with mass of the second car, velocity of the second car initial divided by the mass of both. Time to plug and chug. Thomas, keep going. What was the mass of car one? Can I write 1,500 because that's less writing? What was the velocity initial of car one? Yep. What was the mass of car two? Uh, same thing. Careful. It's not. Isn't it a thousand? Yeah. Yeah. Smaller car. And now I'm going to say, be very, very careful. What was the initial velocity of car two? What? Oh, Thomas, you made my day. What was that? Negative, Negative 22. This is a head-on collision. And then it's going to be divided by 1,500. A split second after the collision, what velocity will this move off at? What do you get? Do you get that? Or am I wrong? 17.6? Uh, positive or negative? Is that right? Yeah? 17.6. Positive or negative? So in the direction of the first car. Okay? What we have is this. Big car coming, small car coming. In the crash, if you look up, it goes Boom. And the split second after the collision, they move off at 17.6 meters per second in the direction of the first car, which means the people in the small car are enduring a tremendous acceleration. Now, this is where 
as soon as they start to move off, they're also probably skidding and losing energy to the pavement, and they will eventually come to a stop. The final momentum of the car crash will eventually be zero, but right now, right at impact, the final momentum is not zero. The final momentum is whatever their initial momentum was. And I could use that to figure out then what the final velocity is. 17.6 meters per second. Next one. Even found a little picture to match this. A skateboarder on a two kilogram skateboard is coasting along at 1.6 meters per second. If he collides with a stationary skateboarder of mass 43 kilograms, also on a, you know what? If the skateboarder is 53 and he's on a two kilogram skateboard, what's his total mass? Okay, so let's write up here 55 kilograms. And if the other skateboarder, if skateboarder number two is 43 kilograms, but also on a two kilogram skateboard, what's her combined total mass? 45 kilograms. Okay. And the two skateboarders coast off in the same direction that the first skateboarder was traveling. What velocity? Oh, they stick together. Okay. Is there a collision? Yes, this is a job for conservation of momentum. The sum of the initial momentum has to equal the sum of the final momentum. The amount of momentum before has to equal the amount of momentum after. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Both are mass one. Oh, is mass two stationary before we start? Okay, before the collision, what's moving? Mass one. Momentum one initial. Bam, they collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Stuck together or separate? Stuck together. But understand, we can, we'll, we'll look at separate later as what we can handle that too, as long as we just go systematically. What was moving before, what was moving after, stuck together or separate. So momentum of both, final. Hey Kyle, momentum was what times what? So this is gonna be mass one, velocity one initial. Wham, they collide. How would I show both? Oh, put both masses in brackets. And if they're stuck together, they must be going at the same velocity. Otherwise, you can't be stuck together. Hey, Nick, what's this question want me to find? Which one? There's two in the question. V1 initial or V final? V final, okay? Understand though, Nick, it wouldn't be hard. I could have told you how fast they move off together and I could have said, hey, how fast was the skateboard incoming at? This is really now re replace skateboards with car accidents and now you're starting to figure out how fast a car was traveling before it hit something else. You were looking at doing some RCMP physics. Uh, you said V final, how do I get the V final by itself? So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're saying yeah. By the way, this is exactly the same physics. Instead of uh, a skateboarder hitting someone standing still, uh, hey, a bullet hitting something standing still and sticking inside. How fast will they move off together? Or if you know how fast they move off together, you can start to now do some ballistics and calculate how fast must the bullet have been incoming. So this is what they do in ballistics as well. Uh, keep going. Uh, Nick, what was the mass of mass one? 55. What was his initial velocity? All over. Uh, 55 plus, what was mass 2? 45? Five. 
By the way, when the first skateboarder hits the second skateboarder, will the final speed be slower, faster, or the same? Just from what you know of running into stuff. Do you think they'll speed up after the collision? No. I'm, you know what? I'm pretty sure the answer is less than 1.6, is it not? I can see you all rushing for your calculators like the wind. 55 and 45 is 100. I got one. Point, point 0.88? Is that right? Positive or negative? So that would be since we let the skateboarder be positive in the same direction as the first skateboarder. We could have let the first skateboarder be negative, and we would have got a negative answer, and it just would have told us in the same direction as the first skateboarder. Did it want us to find anything else? What velocity? No, we're good. Okay. A rifle bullet leaves the muzzle with a velocity of that. If the three kilogram rifle is held very loosely, with what velocity will it recoil? Recall, oh, low many months ago, I showed you a YouTube clip of guys firing an elephant gun to show you an example of Newton's third law that forces come in pairs. And recall, I, I did say conservation momentum comes out of Newton's third law, because if forces come in pairs, the forces are identical, and I think the time will be identical for both of them, and force times time is impulse or change momentum. Okay. So this is... Uh, can we calculate the muzzle recoil? Sure. Is there a collision? No. Is there an explosion when you fire a gun? Yes. This is a job for conservation of momentum. The sum of all the momentum beforehand equals the sum of all the momentum afterwards. The sum of all the momentum before the collision equals the sum of all the momentum after the collision. Before you pull the trigger, what's moving? The bullet, the rifle, or both? It's a trick question. Before you pull the trigger, what is moving? Carson. My initial momentum is zero. Bam! I pull the trigger. The gun goes off. By the way, you should read... On my YouTube videos, because people watch these online, some of the comments I get on today's lesson, because kids are listening to this with headphones, are always quite advanced. Anyways, okay. I'm awake now, wherever you are. After the collision, after the explosion, what's moving? The bullet, the rifle, or both? Both. Stuck together or separate? Momentum. How about I'm going to go B for bullet and R for rifle? B final plus momentum R final. You okay with that derivation there? Kyle, momentum is what times what? By the way, by the end of today's lesson, it's worth it if all of you have that one at your fingertips because you're going to get tired of looking it up. Okay. So I guess it's going to be mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet, final, plus mass of the rifle, velocity of the rifle, final. What are we trying to find here? Which one? There's like uh, rifle final? Okay. How would I get that by itself? I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minus that to that side. And it's just going to become negative because there's a zero over there. Yes? So I think I'm going to get this. Negative MBVB equals MRVR. Oh, final, final. And you said I'm trying to get this by itself, Deb? How would I get it by itself? Okay, so I think I'm going to get this. The final velocity of the rifle is going to be negative mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet, divided by mass 
of the rifle? Negative. What's the mass of the bullet? 0 0.06. Velocity of the bullet? 600. Mass of the rifle? 3. I can do this in my head. 600 divided by 3 is 200. Uh, 200 times 0 0.06 is going to be 20 times 0 0.6 is going to be, do you get, double check me, 12? Yeah? What's the negative telling me? If the bullet went east, which way did the rifle recoil? West. If the bullet went Let's go more generic. Forwards. Which way did the rifle recoil? Backwards. What if I had a bigger bullet? What if the mass was bigger? What would happen to the recoil? Bigger, smaller, or stay the same? Bigger. That's what you saw in the video. You guys remember the video I'm talking about where we had all the guys shooting the elephant? That's a big gun with a high velocity, because if that gets bigger, it's also going to be bigger, and a big, massive projectile. That's why if you fire a pellet gun or a BB gun, almost no recoil. Why? Really small mass, pretty slow velocity. And the gun itself has enough of a mass. There is some recoil, but you probably don't even notice it. Spencer is sitting in a canoe, floating on the water next to a dock. Spencer decides to stand up, and I used to teach canoeing at a summer camp, and I saw this all the time. People would stand up in their canoe and they would try and step onto the dock. Now here's the problem. And, oh, and then the canoe would move side and they'd get the splits and get wet. Why? Right now, the canoe and the person are a system. And if they're at rest, what's their momentum right now? So what does their momentum have to be afterwards? Still, so if, moment, if Spencer stands up and he creates a momentum to his right to get on the dock, how can we maintain a momentum of zero? Which way must the canoe move? Has to move to the left. Or if you've ever been swimming in a lake or a pool and you've tried balancing or standing on an inner tube or a small little boat, if you try diving off the boat, it doesn't work well. Why? As soon as you try pushing yourself forwards, what happens to the thing that you were standing on? shoots backwards because your initial momentum was zero, your final momentum was zero. Initial and final momentum are equal to zero. If Spencer steps right, canoe moves left. Flash. So how do you get out of a canoe? You stand up. Right now, what's my momentum? Still zero. What's my momentum? Still zero. And you sit down on the dock. And now you've got an external force. It's no longer a closed system. Now your body is using the dock as an external force. Now the law of conservation momentum is no longer going to be there. Now you can apply a force with your feet pulling the canoe in, tugging in with this hand. Or you, you, you have to use the dock and get in some kind of external force. <coughs> Although sometimes it's funner just to let the people learn the hard way. Although when I taught canoeing back in the early 90s, Everybody didn't have a $600 expensive smartphone in their pocket, so it was okay to let them get wet. Now I probably have to reconsider that. Space, the final frontier. A space capsule consists of a main capsule and a probe. The space vehicle is traveling at 120 meters per second when an explosion, bang, occurs between the capsule and the probe. After the explosion, the probe now moves forward at 280 meters per second. What's the new speed of the main capsule after the explosion? After the what? After the what? 
Yeah. After the explode, what? Yeah. Yeah. This is a job for conservation momentum. Especially because I notice they're asking for speed, although I'm going to find velocity, probably. The sum of all the momentum before the explosion equals the sum of all the momentum after the explosion. Hopefully this next bit is going to start to sound familiar. Before the explosion, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both. Amy stuck together or separate? Mass 1 plus, oh, hang on, I won't write that yet. I'm going to go momentum both initial. When you get good, you may skip this line and go straight to breaking down mass times velocities everywhere, but in our notes, we'll do it the long way still. Boom! There's an explosion. After the explosion, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both? Stuck together or separate? Mass 1, oh, sorry, momentum 1, final. Momentum 2, final. Kyle, momentum is what times what? So both would be in brackets mass 1 plus mass 2 V initial. And I can see that from the diagram. It's going to be 2,500 plus 1,500. V initial is going to be 120. Uh, mass 1 V1 final plus mass 2 V2 final. By the way, the other thing I could have done, instead of going 1 and 2, I could have used a little C for capsule, P for probe. The only reason I didn't want to use a P for probe is P is momentum. I didn't want to have P, P and get confused. And so I'll use 1 and 2. So here's mass 1. Here's mass 2. Since they gave me a picture, I'll just label it. What are we trying to find? Natalia, what are we trying to find here? I know it's a velocity. Which one? First of all, a final velocity or an initial velocity? A final. Which one? I think uh, since we said this is going to be mass one cap, you know what? This guy. Let's get this by itself. How? I need to move this over. How? Subtract. And then how would I move the M1 over? Could we do that one step? Are you guys good enough now? I could say something about this beats some little triangle, to, but I won't anyway. Okay. Um, I think we're going to get this then, if I hear you correctly. V1 final, you said subtract the M2, V2 over. Is that right, Justin? I think that's what she said. And then you said divide by M1. There you go. And, and, and uh, you know, as always, you can memorize all these. You know what? Memorize that if there's an explosion or a collision, because you can derive it all from there. How? Before the collision, what was moving? Mass one, mass two, or both stuck together or separate? After the collision, what was moving? Mass one, mass two, or both stuck together or separate? In fact, in physics 12, we'll start to say, what if there's three or four masses? It's just an extension. It's more terms. So final V is going to be bracket. Let's get my numbers here. I get this all on one page? I get it. Just about. Uh, 2,500 plus 1,500 times 120. Take away 1,500 times. Um, this 280, Natalia, should it be positive or negative? This here, positive or negative? Well, since I let that be positive and it's pointing to the right, is this one pointing to the right? Positive. If I get a negative answer, I'll know that the capsule got blasted backwards in the explosion. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, so positive. Just what I'm really trying to say is be really paranoid with your vectors and your directions. Okay? You've got a teacher who will almost certainly on your test give you a couple of direction changes to see who's paying attention. And also because they're way more interesting. Uh, M1, 2,500.
You really should practice this on your calculator. Brackets around the top. Bracket and then bracket 2500 plus 1500 close bracket times 120 take away 1500 times 280 divided by I think that'll get you there ooh nice you get an even 24 yeah no yeah positive or negative positive is that okay Amelia yeah you got different answers, okay? First of all, I might add those in my head. I'm pretty sure 2,500 and 1,500 is 4,000. So if you're looking for an easier way, bracket 4,000 times 120 minus 1,500 times 280, close bracket, divided by... This is why I said you might want to practice these on your calculator. I know on the test I see the right work all the time and the wrong answer. So practice, 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 practice. Natalia, after the explosion, is the main capsule still traveling forwards? How do you know? Positive. Positive. Okay. If you're not getting that, I'll come look at it later, by the way. Oscar, you ready? What's part B asking me to find? The magnitude of the impulse. Hey, what's impulse another word for? Look at this question. Has it mentioned a force or a time anywhere? In other words, am I going to use this one? Is there in the question anything with newtons or time? You know what? I'm going to use the final minus initial. I'm going to use M V final minus M V initial. Which M? The probe. The probe. <coughs> What's the mass of the probe? I've scrolled down. Was it 1,500? Yeah. What's the final velocity of the probe? Did they give it to me? 280 minus which M the probe what was the initial velocity of the probe 120 okay try that on your calculator You get twenty. Uh, sorry, two hundred and forty thousand. And this is momentum, kilogram meters per second. We're gonna add a part C. What was the impulse given to the capsule? You can do this with no work whatsoever. Momentum doesn't come from nowhere. Okay. You could go final minus initial. Trust me. Well, I can do it really quickly. Uh, it's going to be 2,500 times the final velocity minus 2,500 times the initial velocity. And there it is. Whatever the first one gained, the other one lost. Conservation momentum. Uh, units, kilogram, meter per second. Curling is great examples 
is great examples of conservation of momentum. Ice is nearly frictionless, lots of collisions. Okay. Good, shut up. Uh, let me see. I want it, I'm gonna skip this one, let's go to this one here. 22 kilogram curling stone. Okay. In this question, Madison, is there a collision? This is a job for conservation of momentum. The sum of all the momentum before the collision equals the sum of all the momentum after the collision. Madison, before, let's call this uh, mass one, the 22, we'll call this mass two. And since I see directions east and west, you know what? I'm gonna be uber paranoid and I'm gonna go north, east, south, west, just to be a little fussy. I skipped an example. You were talking while I, did, yeah, okay, you bet. Madison, before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Stuck together or separate? Momentum one initial, momentum two initial. Figure out where we are? Okay. Why they collide? After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Madison, my angel. Okay. What about mass one? If we're not sure, let's include it. Maybe we'll end up with a zero there. Stuck together or separate? I think curling rocks, from what I've watched, don't stick together. They, so I'm gonna go like this. Momentum one, final. Momentum two, final. This one's got four terms, okay. Which way, Madison, do you want to let be positive? East or west? Doesn't matter. We'll just be consistent. Okay, so you know what I'm even going to do because I'm so paranoid? I'm going to put a little plus sign over here, a little minus sign there, just to remind you. Right? All right. Hey, Kyle, momentum is what times what? Mass 1, V1 initial. Mass 2, V2 initial. Mass 1, V1 final. Mass 2, V2 final. Madison, what's this question want me to find? Do you see now both of them are moving after the collision because it wants me to find the final velocity of the first and it gave me the final velocity of the second? Okay. So, um, how would I get this by, oh, how would I move this over? And then how would I get rid of the M1? Oh, I mean, this is going to be kind of long-ish, but I think what you're saying is the final velocity of the first stone. Rewrite these guys, M1, V1 initial, M2, V2 initial. You said subtract M2, V2 final, I agree, and divide by M1. Okay. You know what? I think I can plug and chug on this line. Uh, what was mass one? 20, no. Yeah, 22? Madison, what's velocity one initial? Plus, what was mass two? 16. What was velocity two initial? Yes, negative what? Take away. Mass two again, 16. What was velocity two final? Positive? Are you positive that it's positive or are you? I, okay. All divided by M122. These are worth practicing on your calculator, humans. Oh, and if I get a positive answer, 
it's going east. If I got a negative answer, it's going west. I'm kind of visualizing it's possible. So we have these curling rocks, Madison, they're colliding. It's possible they could bounce both backwards, in which case I'll get it. Or it's possible this guy could have kept going. There's all sorts of different ways that I can visualize the collision. Do you get 0.29? No, yes? Yeah. Positive? Okay. 0.29 meters per second. Hey, direction, Madison. <coughs> East. Since they gave me a direction in the question, I can be specific. This is the law of conservation of momentum. Um, I'm going to skip that. I think I'm going to skip that too. So let me pause and get you the homework. Duke screwed up for the last time. I used these words in the homework. So there's two types of collisions. When the objects stick together, we call this when they stick together an inelastic collision. And when objects bounce off of each other, like a body check, we call this an elastic collision. And I noticed I used those words in the homework. And here's how people have been remembering it for the past 60 years. What's an elastic band? You guys know what that is? What's it made out of? Elastic, elastic band, rubber bounces, bounces off each other. In an elastic collision, they bounce off. In an inelastic collision, they stick together. And I noticed in the homework, I use the word inelastic and elastic. So your homework for now, for sure, finish, take home quiz, start conservation of momentum one. Uh, tomorrow I'll be giving you conservation momentum two, some review, another take home quiz. Also, if you haven't, please hand in momentum and impulse plus impulse sheet today if it's done. Otherwise, get it for Wednesday. We are in the home stretch, my children. <laughs>